Okay, chapter 10, categorical data analysis. This chapter focuses on how we can analyze qualitative data. So qualitative random variables yield responses that can be classified as like gender, male or female, but qualitative data that falls into more than two categories often results in something called a multinomial experiment. So in this section, we consider a multinomial experiment with K outcomes that corresponds to categories of a single qualitative variable. The results of such an experiment are summarized in a one-way table. The term one-way is used because only one variable is classified. Typically, we want to make inferences about the true proportions that occur in the K categories based on the sample information in the one-way table. Let's go over important properties of multinomial experiments. First, the experiment consists of n identical trials, or our sample size is some value of n. There are k possible outcomes for each trial, and the probabilities remain the same for each trial. Trials are independent, and the random variables of interest are the number of observations that fall into each class. The first metric we will talk about is called the chi-squared test. The goal of the chi-squared test is to determine if our expected probabilities that are given to us are equal to our observed probabilities that we find during our experiment. We will start with a one-way contingency table and then move to a two-way, and you can get larger and larger contingency tables. Our null hypothesis is that our expected probabilities are true, and the alternative is that at least one of those probabilities is not consistent with the expected probability. Can, uh, the basic assumptions to run a chi-squared test are that a multinomial experiment has been conducted. This is generally satisfied by taking a random sample from the population of interest. Second is the sample size n is large, that is satisfied if for every cell or class, the expected cell count uh, will be equal to five or more. So remember that for your homework. All right, so this is what a very simple one-way contingency table looks like. Let's say we had three candidates for a president, Tom, Bill, and Mary. So we have three, or K equals three outcomes. Each candidate is an outcome. We have the number of votes for each candidate, and they sum to 100. This will give us three proportions or percentages of votes for each candidate that we can use to run our chi-square test. Our null hypothesis is that each probability calculated will be equal to whatever our expected probability was. And our alternative hypothesis is at least one of the multinomial probabilities does not equal its hypothesized value. So we will be calculating out the chi-squared statistic. Um, it is found by subtracting our observed value from the expected value and squaring it and dividing by the expected value. So on this previous slide, this was our observed values. This would be n1, n2, n3. But let's say we expect them all to be one third. So this should have been 33, 33, 33. So calculate that out. It would be 35 minus 33 squared divided by 33. And then we do that for each outcome, and we would sum them together, and that would give us our chi-squared statistic. So our critical value is found using the, the chi-squared table and the degrees of freedom, where the degrees of freedom is k minus 1. So if the value we calculate out for our chi-square is greater than that, uh, our critical value that we get from the table, based on whatever alpha level we're interested in, then we can reject the null hypothesis that the probabilities are consistent. 
So remember that we have to have k minus 1 degrees of freedom when we look up the value on the table. So here is an example of how to read a chi-square table. If our alpha is 0 0.05, we're going to be interested in this particular column. And our k number of outcomes is 5. We have to do k minus 1. So 5 minus 1 equals 4 degrees of freedom. So we have our degrees of freedom column. So we would go down to 4 degrees of freedom. It would go over to our 0.05 chi-squared. We would get a um, critical value of 9.4877. So here's an example of, uh, or let's do an example. As personnel director, you want to test the perception of fairness of three methods of performance evaluation. Of 180 employees, 63 rated method one is fair, 45 rated method two is fair, and 72 rated method three is fair. At the 0 0.05 level of significance, is there a difference in perception? So our null hypothesis is that they should have all been distributed equally. So they're all, the proportions are all equal to one third. That doesn't always have to be equal to, or we're not always suggesting that the proportions have to be equal, but in this particular problem, we are. The alternative hypothesis is that at least one of these proportions is incorrect. We are interested at the alpha equals 0 0.05 level. And we have observed values of N1 is 63, N2 is 45, and N3 is 72. So we have K equals 3. Um, so K equals 3, so our degrees of freedom would be 3 minus 1. So we'd have 2 degrees of freedom. Uh, so we would go look up our value for alpha equals 0.05 for two degrees of freedom, and it should be 5.991. Um, but we can use Excel to calculate out the results for this. I've created a uh, calculator for you. Um, so the hypothesized values were that each um, proportion was one third. Our actual observed values were 63, 45, and 72, which was 180. The way it calculates it out is our, we sum together our observed minus our expected. So we get our expected values here. We have a total of 180. This was the proportion of it. So one third of 180 is 60. So each value will be expected to be 60. Here, we calculate out this formula. It is our n value minus our expected value squared and divided by our expected value. To get our chi-square value, we just sum those together. To um, Excel has a chi-square test function, so what it does is it runs a chi-square test of the observed values and the expected values, and it will give you a p-value, in this case it is 0.0429. So our critical value was 5.9. Nine, one, so that is our alpha equals 0.05. We calculated out a chi-square value of 6.3 here. 6.3 is greater than 5.991, thus we have evidence to reject the null hypothesis. Our actual p-value was 0.0429, which is less than 0.05, and thus we can reject the null hypothesis. That is the first video I'm going to do, as soon as I have time, I'm going to work on the second video that talks about um, larger contingency tables. Um, so look forward to that.